One of the things that's been a real asset has been a few volunteers who have matched themselves to particular jobs and taken them on long term. So rather than people being just generally available to help out whenever you need them, which is useful, people saying, all right, that particular tiny little job, I'll do that. And I know from like a committee perspective, that is such a huge relief to know, all right, that person there, they're gonna to go to that market every two weeks and set up the breeze stall. This person or this couple are gonna handle the membership and they're just gonna you know, get really, really good at doing that. You know? So there's an area of our operation that we can just yep, be completely confident that's gonna get handled. And sometimes those jobs expand and then you know, the person can train somebody else and they can take over. And I think as a committee, we've taken seriously wanting to respect volunteers' input, wanting to value what they do, wanting to make it a, a good experience for them. Fortunately, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of skilled people out there now, and Breeze has been good at tapping into those people, you know, getting into the best expertise, finding these people, you know, the work that Nick's done early on in just finding the people who were at the top of the tree in terms of their knowledge on PVs or hot water or just where things were going which meant that right from the start, Breeze was accepted as a knowledgeable body. You know, people would come to Breeze in with confidence. We had a lot of professionals on the committee that had had experience with facilitating or graphic design or writing grants or organising events, and I think that made a huge difference, so we were able mm. to present that professional edge. By getting the right information, you know, they've been accepted in a way that a government authority wouldn't or just sort of can't. People got that reluctance. So Breeze has filled a great big gap that no one else was picking up on and probably never will. So the, you know, there's certainly a huge future for Breeze, no doubt about it. A really strong part of Breeze for me, and I don't think I'm alone because I get the feedback all the time, is it means I'm no longer alone. I've got a communi community to talk to and support and to help me through, and that's really important for me, and I think it's important for a lot of people. And that gap was obviously there because we're connecting and we're talking and we're sharing and we're growing and we're moving forward. I found by being involved in Breeze um, that my learning has been accelerated immensely um, because you've constantly got new information coming your way and by taking the extra step and, and not just being a member, by actually being on the committee, it's, it's just given me that extra in interest and um, I'm learning a lot more than I otherwise would which is why I took on the role because I thought I want to know I want to know more about this but if I do if I do nothing I probably I'll probably just forget about it so the best thing for me is just to get involved straight away and then and that'll accelerate my learning one of our current challenges is our but the size that we are with over 800 paid members so that sense of connection within our breeze communities um, it's, it's so important and actually a lot of the activities that we're doing are very focused on particular outcomes, so a meeting around solar panels or a particular event, but we are not, those earlier opportunities for more informal connection and conversation don't exist so much and I think that um, maybe looking at ways that we can start to um, recreate and all bring that back into the way that we operate, so that particularly new members also, they have um, not just an email but they do have those conversations because it's often through the conversations that people do become active it's not often when you first pay your $20 get your email but you still feel like you're not sure what the organization's about or how you could get involved but if you actually get the chance to have a couple with someone suddenly mm. you know that you feel you feel comfortable and relaxed about doing that yeah because um, I know realistically if, if I didn't do that um, you know I'd probably just continue to read the monthly newsletters and that'd be about it so um, yeah, just knowing myself and um, that, was, that was the best way for me to learn more, is just to get involved. One of the things I've learned over the last few months or the last year or so in particular is that a lot of our volunteers do not see what they're doing as volunteering. They just see what uh, their contributions to Breeze mm -hmm. and the um, benefits of that to the wider the community and the, the climate change action movement mm -hmm. are just something that they're doing. It's not like saying, oh, I've got a bit of spare time on my hands, I'm all right at doing that, let me go and find an organisation that is a good fit and I'll do something good for the community. It's actually, it is about embodying that lifestyle change and that community 
change to living more sustainably. And a lot of I think a lot of our volunteers actually, they're not necessarily looking for recognition in that sort of traditional or classic way. They're actually looking, um, this is life. This is the life that they live and that they want to contribute and be part of the change. So I've had a, a passion for the environment my whole life, um, I suppose, and done my little bit in my little world and never really known what else I could do or how I could do it further than you know my little world. When I ca when I came back to Ballarat, I um I moved into a, an off grid uh, solar powered house with tank water and veggie garden, and, um, so I sort of had a, a baptism of fire um, into the renewable energy or living off renewable energies. The system we had in the house was old and failed just after we moved back in so we had to upgrade and looking into what was available and what we could do and what we couldn't do and the government grants and things like that was um, was all pretty hard um, but I wasn't a member of Breeze then. Um, if I probably had been a member of Breeze I probably would have found it a lot easier because I would have had all those like-minded people and, and contacts. Um, but it wasn't long after that that I did get into Breeze and we ended up opening up the house to uh, for Breeze's uh, Sustainable House Day, um, which I enjoyed immensely. I had, uh, I think we had 250 people come through the house in a day, and I just went from my shed where our batteries and our solar equipment is to the house, which is powered by all that, explaining how it all works and showing people that our house is a normal looking house from the outside, operates as all their houses probably do. Um, but we don't, um, we're not connected to the grid. Uh, we generate all of our power ourselves. So my role is to help with, with accounts and, and I've um, made a few small changes at home as well. And, and everyone else within Breeze too has, has got their own small roles to play. And collectively, um, it, it does make a huge difference, even if you are only doing small things here and there.